Hello, GetFPV Learn community. I'm Derek, and I'm going to be your host as we discover the basics of Betaflight. So what is that? In this video series, I'm going to break down all the key components of Betaflight into tiny, manageable, bite-sized little chunks to make sure that you're going to be successful with your setup. In this video, we're going to talk about downloading and installing the configurator. And in future videos, we're going to install drivers and get all the way into the bits and pieces of just about everything you're going to need to know within Betaflight. As we get started, what exactly is Betaflight? I think I can sum it up relatively easily. Essentially, Betaflight is the software that controls and allows us to fly our quadcopters. Betaflight is probably the most popular software solution for our quads. However, there are a few other flavors out there. Maybe some of you have heard of KISS or Race 1 or maybe even Clean Flight. Well, those are some alternatives or even derivatives of Betaflight. Betaflight consists of two key components. One is the configurator, which we're going to install today. And two is the firmware that actually is going to live and help you fly your quadcopter. Now, of course, once we install that software on both the computer and the quadcopter, we're going to have to set it up and tell it how we're working with it. But that's the point of this series. We're going to go through all of that. Without further ado, what do you say? We jump on over to the computer, get ourselves on the internet, and start downloading some software. For this example, I'm using Windows 10, and I'm also going to use Google Chrome to do the download. I feel that this is a similar setup to what a lot of you are going to be using, so we're going to roll with it. My very first step is to open up my web browser. As I mentioned earlier, in this case, it's Google Chrome. And right in my main Google window, I'm just simply going to type in Betaflight Configurator. See, it's literally that simple. Now I'm going to let Google do its search. Now. Once we get our results, you are probably going to be presented with a whole bunch of stuff here regarding Betaflight. But we're not worried about all this. This is all we need to find is the GitHub for the Betaflight configurator releases. You can see I've clicked on a few things here in the past, but this is the correct link. So again, GitHub, Betaflight, Betaflight configurator releases, this is what we're after. I'm going to go ahead and click on this link, and it's going to take me to the Betaflight GitHub page that is going to allow me to download the configurator. Once we get here, you should be presented by the most recent version of Betaflight. In this case today, it's configurator version 10.5.1, and that's fine. We're going to download and install this. I do recommend that you go through and read all of these release notes, uh, especially as time goes on, the information in here is going to become more important to you. But at this moment, I feel like it's going to help you learn, especially when we're dealing with these things, they can be so sophisticated. I feel any amount of information that we can absorb is always going to be a good thing. So make sure you read your release notes before you download any software. Once I'm, of course, ready to download the Betaflight Configurator, I'm just simply going to scroll down the page, and we're going to get to this part where we have assets. And you're going to be presented by all kinds of weird-looking Betaflight things, and you might not have any idea what to download. Well, that's okay. I'm going to help you figure that out. If you're on a Windows system, you're going to want to download this EXE. If you're on a Mac, you're going to want to download this DMG. If you're on a Linux or some type of AMD platform or whatever this RPM is, sorry, but you're on your own. I really don't think a lot of people are using this software. And honestly, if you're using a platform that is going to utilize this, you're probably much more sophisticated than I am at working with technology, and you probably don't need my instructions. So again, for Windows, you're going to want to download the EXE. For the Mac, you're going to want to download the DMG. Now that I'm here, I'm just simply going to click on the file I want to download, and Chrome is just going to simply start downloading it. Sometimes, depending on your operating system or the browser that you're using, you might get confronted with a confirm dialog box. Just simply say OK or do whatever you need to in order to download that file. So mine's downloading. We're going to give it a second here. Once that's completed, we're going to start the install. After the download has completed, there's a few ways that we can access it in order to install. 
Uh, and we'll go over a couple ways real quickly while I'm here in the browser. Of course, the first method is we can just simply click on the link right here in Chrome. We can click on show all downloads here as well. Uh, either way is going to take you to your download folder, or you can just simply navigate directly to your download folder within File Explorer. So whatever works for you, doesn't matter. They all take you to the same place. For the most part though, if you have not changed any of your settings in Chrome, it is going to be saving your downloads to the downloads folder. If you had made that change and you're saving your files somewhere else, I'm willing to bet you probably know where that location is and you're not going to need me to help you find that file. But again, if you had not made any changes, most of your major browsers, whether it's Chrome, Firefox, Safari, by default, they're all going to save your files to your download folder. Being in downloads already, I'm just simply going to double click the installer and wait for it to load. Okay, Windows has presented me with a warning, user account control, and essentially it's asking me, are you sure that you want to install this program? Sometimes some software can be malicious and damage your computer. In this case, the computer is just making sure that you actually want to install this. Well, we definitely do, because if we don't, we can't set up our quadcopter. I'm going to go ahead and click on yes. We are now welcomed by the beta flight setup window. To begin, I'm just going to click next. And just like everything else, we need to agree, sign your life away, whatever this says. We'll never know because nobody reads it, but you do have to click agree. This window is for Betaflight's default installation location. If you don't know what any of this means, just simply click install. There's really no reason to change any of this. After clicking install, the install is going to continue. It's going to write the files to my computer, and this is going to take about a minute or so. Once the installation is complete, you're going to be presented with this finish window. By default, you're going to have this checkbox selected that says run Betaflight Configurator. So at this moment, if I hit finish, it's going to open Betaflight right up for me. Because I have a few other windows open, I'm not going to do it this time. So I'm going to deselect the box and hit finish. Now we're pretty much done with everything else that we've used. We've been able to successfully download and install a configurator. I'm going to close up everything else that we've had open. As you can see, I now have an icon on my desktop for Betaflight Configurator. I'm going to double click it and open the application. There it is. We have success. That wasn't so hard, right? You can do it. You can make this thing work. I promise. Just take all this information that you're going to have to learn and put it in little bite-sized pieces as you go. That's how everyone has done this so far. Nobody knows this stuff overnight. Nobody knows this stuff immediately. It's going to take time and you're going to have to make a little bit of an investment in learning it. But I promise you, if you do, the rewards are going to be worth it. I think that concludes this video tutorial. In the next one, we're going to talk about installing drivers. So if you haven't done that yet, make sure you come back and check that video out. But other than that, I'm done here today. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.